As of recording this, Riot's kernel level anti-cheat, Vanguard, has been introduced into League of Legends. And now it says I have to restart AGAIN! What do you mean Vanguard fucking restart dog shit? Vanguard is extremely controversial for a lot of reasons, a large part of it being how much access it has over your PC. But how much risk is the average user taking on by using this, and will it make your game run worse? Let's break it all down. But first, a word from my finance team. Are you sick of making game saving plays and having to manually record them like a big idiot? Well, Outplayed is here to automatically save your best moments for you. Kills, deaths, assists, ultimates. On top of that, with a single click, you can share your clips to the platform of your choice so that when that big family gathering comes around and your family's like, hey, it's Mr. YouTube, how's the big YouTube career going? You can say, yeah, look how many views I have now. Um, anyway, the link to use our plate is in the description down below. I got some stuff to work out. Something I found interesting was the amount of claims about Vanguard impacting performance, so let's start out with a quick comparison. I recorded this clip on my main server, the OCE Super Server, before Vanguard had been released yet, and upon loading into a practice tool game with all of my video settings set to default and uncapping the FPS, I'm getting around a thousand. Compare this to now, which I record when Vanguard is actually out under the same circumstances and I'm getting around the same. Additionally, on the PBE where Vanguard is also active, the FPS also hovers between 900 and 1000. So it seems at least in this extremely isolated test that Vanguard doesn't seem to impact FPS to any noticeable extent. When you log into the League client for the first time when Vanguard is enabled, you'll be greeted with this screen, because Vanguard has some prerequisites for it to run properly. If you don't meet these, you won't be able to play at all. Fuck off, Champion Mastery. Funnily enough though, this entire message is easily bypassable due to the League client being essentially a web browser. Much like how you can use Inspect Element to delete elements from a web page that are blocking you, something similar can be done with this error message. This will let you use the full functionality of the League client even without Vanguard, but it's not really a groundbreaking exploit due to there being server-side checks that'll block you once you actually get into a game. In a similar vein, you can also send a post request to the backend to queue up for a ranked game, a normal game, or just whatever queue you want really. I didn't test this one out myself, but I assume it would suffer a similar fate once you actually got into a game. So how much data is Vanguard actually sending off? Let's talk about kernel level access. It's a bit of a buzzword alongside spyware, which in all fairness does sound pretty scary, so let's break down how much data Vanguard actually has access to and what it's actually sending off. Since Vanguard has been released, there's been a lot of pandemonium across social media about how it's been bricking people's PCs, selling their information, the usual stuff. Before I even start digging into this, if you're one of the people who think or know that Vanguard is fucking your shit up and you still can access your PC, the quickest way to shut it off is to open up your command prompt and type this in. This will quickly disable the kernel driver, but apart from that, don't fuck around here because you will probably break something. You can also reboot your PC in safe mode, and this will disable any third-party drivers and just run Windows in the most bare-bones state possible. And if you scroll down, you can see that the driver is not running on the system launch. Anyway, moving on. This is a program called Wireshark. It's an open source network analyzer that lets you take a deeper look at everything that's running in and out of your ethernet cables. It's primarily used for troubleshooting network issues, but in our case we can use it to see what Vanguard is doing while League isn't open. The answer is not actually a whole lot. Nothing to be exact. It doesn't appear to have any network access at all until you actually open the League client, which is very nice to see. This was mentioned in the big Vanguard article written by one of the rioters working on Vanguard. Quote, when you launch League, the Vanguard client contacts the driver to confirm that it thinks everything is 100%, and if so, you receive a valid anti-cheat session and may connect to the game server. Instructions from the client then start enabling features within the driver to watch for things that might tamper with the signed League process and prevent them. You can always disable the driver whenever you'd like, you'll just need a fresh reboot to recertify the integrity of the trust chain before you jump into the game. So you can turn it off while you're not playing, but you'll just have to restart your PC before you can play again. Now, I don't want this to seem like a vote of confidence for Vanguard or kernel level anti-cheat in general from my end. I'm actually not a big fan of it at all, but we'll dive into that in a bit. One of the biggest issues with Vanguard coming to League is that it would destroy certain parts of the game created by the community. Things like custom skins, which have been around since the game's inception, would be picked up by Vanguard and categorised as third-party programs, making them unsafe to use. Now that the live release of Vanguard is here, custom skins seem to have gotten the old clear from Riot, and they're working fine, for now. Quote, We have confirmation that the custom skins do indeed work on the Philippines server, alongside Vanguard with the new DLL patching option. We expect custom skins and most of our tooling to keep on working just fine after the 14.9 patch. We can confidently say that you will most likely not get banned. 
There's been no reports of bins so far from the Philippine server and we do not expect that to change anytime soon as it would signal a stance change from Riot towards custom skins, something which is unlikely to happen. So far, Vanguard's been out for about a week and there's still no reported cases of someone being banned due to using custom skins, so it seems like they're safer now. Some groups of players aren't so lucky though. Linux has been wiped out entirely with their best shot now being a workaround by dual booting to Mac or running some sort of virtual machine. Since at least for now, the Mac version of League doesn't require Vanguard at all. Windows 11 users have also been in the line of fire, albeit indirectly. TPM 2.0 is an additional layer of security that was introduced alongside Windows 11 that allows it to run programs at a higher level of trust than what is usually allowed. But this is something that can be bypassed when installing Windows 11 and it causes some pretty annoying interactions with Vanguard that require you to go into your BIOS and change a bunch of settings which is a big hassle for someone who might be a little bit less tech literate and just wants to play a video game. There's also an additional, more severe error that can happen here which a lot of people have been posting about, LS being one of the more well known ones that comes to mind. Eventually, after playing Operation with his computer, the problem was fixed. The problem still stands though that if you're someone who's not really tech literate or might not know what to do when you're poking around inside of your computer, this is bad. So after looking at Wireshark and what's possible with Vanguard itself, it doesn't actually seem too bad. Now, let me explain myself, because I know that's a controversial statement. Vanguard, as an anti-cheat purely in a vacuum, is not that bad. The only part that actually makes it a little bit more invasive than other anti-cheats is the fact that it runs on startup. But even then, as we showed before, it's not actually transmitting anything until the game actually starts. Apart from that, which is a nuisance, I will admit, a lot of other anti-cheats and even anti-viruses all run on the kernel level including easy anti-cheat, which, <laughs> which you've probably used if you've played any online game ever. The reason kernel level anti-cheat even has to exist in the first place is because the most common way to use any sort of hacks is to inject them into the game's memory by inserting them into important DLL files. The most efficient way to do this is by accessing system drivers which exist at the kernel level. You might have seen this diagram before, since it's been used a lot over the past few weeks. The anti-cheat arms race has more or less consisted of hacks becoming more and more undetectable and thus anti-cheat needing to become more and more invasive. Each time a cheat delves deeper into the system, the anti-cheat has to follow. Where the unrest comes from, or at least a lot of it, is that given Riot's recent security breach, if an attacker was able to gain access to Riot's systems again, this time there's the potential for a lot more to be at stake. There's a really interesting case of Genshin's kernel level anti-cheat driver, mhyprot2.sys, being compromised and being utilised for malicious activity. But that's a story for the next video.